We've all heard the old adage, go with your gut, but our next guest, data scientist Seth Stevens Davidowitz, argues that actually may not be the best bet in his new book, Don't Trust Your Gut, Using Data to Get What You Really Want in Life. Seth, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks so much for having me. So it, it sounds like your basic premise, your thesis statement here is, don't go with your gut. Why is that? Yeah, people don't like hearing that because a lot of people love going with their gut. But I'm just saying there's a lot of data out there to help you make better decisions. And frequently, a lot of people get make bad decisions when they follow their intuition. They don't really think it through, uh, think through what the data is out there on all kinds of big topics uh, that I cover in the book. And, and so how does one determine what the relevant and reliable data points would be when they're making a decision? Uh, you basically have to read my book because that, that gives you all the reliable data on all the topics. But I go through all the big ones. So, for example, if you want to know if you're picking a partner, uh, there are actually studies now that have studied studied more than 11,000 couples, and they've seen what predicts uh, romantic happiness, uh, which couples end up happy. And it turns out there are certain traits about a partner that are more predictive. Uh, if your partner has a growth mindset, conscientiousness, satisfied with life. Uh, not the things we try to date on. We always try to date someone who's beautiful or tall or uh, has a sexy occupation, but the things that actually predict long-term happiness are very different. And you also talk about these really unexpected correlations, these various uh, points that you can look at. For example, you took uh, an idea of what makes a great parent, and then you looked at their tax records. What's the relationship there? Yeah, so they've studied uh, in tax records when kids grow up in different neighborhoods, uh, what happens, how do the kids turn out? And growing up in certain neighborhoods like Seattle, uh, Washington, Madison, Wisconsin, certain others, kids who grew up there turn out to do way better in life. Uh, so it shows the power of a neighborhood. Uh, really, one of the most, probably the most important decision any parent makes is where to raise their kids. Mm -hmm. And there's actually data now that can tell parents where to do this. And that's separate from how much income the family has, is that yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's the same, it's parents, the same parents, but di siblings grew up in different places. So you kind of take into account everything else, but one sibling grew up in Denver and one sibling grew up in Seattle. And the one that grew up in Seattle just en ends up on average doing much better. And I guess that many people are going to say, well, you know, this is a battle between maybe your head and, and your heart, your instinct, right? And so how does science really come into play? Yeah, I, I don't, you're... I'm not saying you should totally ignore what you feel or I'm not saying just listen to this and tomorrow move to Seattle. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's a lot that goes into play where your family is, where your friends are, where your job is. But you just have more, it just, it's always good to have more information. And this inf information is now available. It's all publicly available. You can learn all these things. And it can just allow you to be, make more informed decisions uh, rather than having this information hidden from you, which it has been previously. And, and you talked about this in relationship when you're choosing a spouse. Is your takeaway essentially from this book that we're just using entirely the wrong data points oftentimes to make our big life decisions? Yeah, certainly in dating, I think a lot of people are drawn, we're, we're drawn to qualities that if you look at the actual long-term happiness, they don't make people happy. Uh, so anything that, for example, uh, people are more likely, I was shocked to find this, to match with someone in online dating, 11.3% more likely if they share the same initials as them, yeah. So, like if someone has, a, your initials are SS, their initials are SS, you're like, yeah, yeah, I swipe right. Well, in the long term, sharing initials is not gonna make you happy. Right. So that just kind of proves how irrational we can be. And we're drawn to these qualities that aren't really qualities that are gonna lead to long-term happiness. I'm gonna start looking more to the science than my gut. So <laughs> thank you, Seth, for this. And don't trust your gut using data to get what you really want in life is available now wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.